Hello and welcome to all. This is Sanketa, a science moderator from Planet. I wholeheartedly welcome all the delegates across the country. We are fortunate enough to get supported by the doctors. Thank you to all the doctors for taking time to join us. I would like to take a minute to introduce our platform, Planet. Planet is one of the largest live digital CME platform in India where the doctors can generate their medical content. Now, I am taking this opportunity to welcome today's master doctor, Dr. Vivek Gupta. Now, he is the Senior Intervention and Cardiologist at the Hospital in Delhi, the Chairman, Indo American and European Conquest. Without any further delay, I would like to hand over the session to you. Kindly proceed with your talk, sir. Over to you. Recording in progress. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, inviting me for a talk uh, related to TAVI. Topic is uh, simple or a little complex, both. Uh, and uh, so I would like to screen, give, before I start sharing the screen, I would like to talk about TAVI. TAVI is a trans aortic valve implantation. And uh, actually it is non-surgical implantation of a new valve in a diseased valve, which is aortic stenosis. Aortic stenosis is an important condition. It's a very, it's a bad disease, mostly in elderly population. And with the rising age, more and more cases of aortic stenosis are getting encountered in the whole of the world. This disease is so bad because it can take life. It is almost as bad as heart attack. It does not lead to a sudden cardiac death. It can also lead to sudden cardiac death, but mostly the patient, when there is a stenosis of the valve, then these patients will have serious implications they will not be able to walk, they will have breathlessness, and sometimes it can cause sudden cardiac death. So it is one of the leading cause of, uh, one of the important cause of death in the elderly population. Before I start scanning again, I would like to show you this heart. The heart is a model. Whatever we are talking about, mostly we are talking of heart attack because of the blockages in the coronary arteries. But this disease is not related to the blockages of the coronary artery. This disease because of the valve, one of the valve which is aortic valve. You can see this is aorta which is arising from the left ventricle. The valve which is not shown here, I had another sample, but the valve inside get blocked. It is not the blockage of the coronary artery, it is not the cholesterol blockage, it is a blockage or stenosis or narrowing. I can show you this. Narrowing of the orifice. For example, this is the valve orifice, you can see, and if it narrows like this, then it will be difficult for the heart to pump the blood. And when the heart contraction is happening, but the pumping is affected because the door through which the, the blood has to go and supply the whole body is stenosed or narrowed, this will cause serious implication in the heart physiology. I have another diagram to show you here. Again, it will show you very important because this is being recorded and a lot of people will see. This is the left ventricle. This is the left ventricle and the blood goes from here. Sorry. The blood goes from here through this valve and supplies the whole of the body. What heart is doing? Heart is supplying the blood to the whole of the body. Heart is supplying the blood to the whole of the body and the blood has to travel through the aorta to go to the whole of it. Aorta has lot of branches. For example, it goes to the brain, it will go into the heart, the head, it will go into the lungs, it will also supply the liver, it will supply the head. The whole body is supplied through a system which God has made through this aortic valve. If this valve get narrowed, this is known as aortic stenosis. And this is happening because of the aging population, especially after the age of 55, 60. And these patients will actually have three types of symptoms. One is angina. Second will be breathlessness on exertion. And third will be sudden cardiac death. And fourth will be heart failure. Because finally heart will stop working and the patient will die. Normally these patients are treated with the help of valve replacement which is done with the open heart surgery but in elderly population in elderly population the open heart surgery is very risky and therefore lot of patients die 
waiting for a surgery or not able to take up surgery. They cannot take up surgery because surgeon says it is risky and therefore we will not touch the valve. Tavi, which I am going to talk about, is actually a non-surgically through the groin putting a new valve without opening the chest and without opening the heart. This was done by Professor Ellen Crivier for the first time, who is my teacher and friend. I will now start sharing the screen because this is very important. I am going to do. Do you have to please uh, yes. enable me to so that I can do the screen sharing? Madam Ankita? Yes, sir. Uh, please enable me so that I can do the screen sharing. Because yes, sir. It's been enabled to you, sir. No, it is still. Uh, See, sir, now it's okay? Now it's okay, okay. 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 Sir, sure. So, can you see the screen now? Yes, sir, it's visible, sir. Can you make it full screen? Okay. So, this is now you can focus here. So, okay. So transcatheter aortic valve implantation is the, my topic and I will show one case which is the first case from India. The first patient from India was done by my patient and I had to go and fly to France. So I will initially give instruction. This is the place Rouen. This is a very beautiful picture. Rouen is a city in France which is near Paris and the first case was held in this hospital Charles Nicole where I used to work in 96, 97, 98. This is a picture of Indraprast Apollo Hospital where I am working now. So that's why I say Professor Dr. Vegupta, I am talking in association with Alan Krivier, who is the father of Tavi. Father of Tavi because he did the first case. So I go into this slide. I will show you this is the picture of the first case which was done in 2002, April 16. And this is Alan Krivier. This is Ellen L. Shalinov. This is Christoph Traw. I used to work in the same cath lab in 96, 97, 98 in the same cardiac catheterization lab in the same operation theatre you can call it in the city of Rouen where the first case was held in 2002. This is the picture and now this is this is uh, uh, 20 years of uh, already been celebrated and that was last year because 2002 and now it is 21st year which is going. So I have to give some introduction before I go to the case based description. Professor Alan Crivier has been my teacher. I have to give a small because you see it's not the teacher's day. But I have to give a tribute to him. He's a good personal friend. So I have a little about his life's journey. Because the person who does for the first time is very important. We all follow. The person who thought about it. The person. So he was actually a resident in Rua. He also worked in Paris. And then he went to Los Angeles for fellowship. This is our few of his lives. This is Brist Latak. Bristol Tag was the head of the department when I joined this department. So, he had done a lot of innovation. And now I will show you some pictures of my stay in France. And these are few pictures. The team which has done the thing. This is Alan Crivier. Then this is Rone Koning. This is Alan El Sharinov. This is a team which have done this. And I used to work in the same department. And these are few pictures of my working with Dr. Alan Crivier here. My son Chen Mei, he is doing cycling with him. And that was 1997. Dr. Krivier came to my house two years back in, in Sarita Vihar in, in, in Delhi. So this is a picture of that place and this is our cath lab in, in, in France. These are few further moments of my working in Charles Nicole Hospital. You can see my picture here. And Dr. Krivier, the same cath lab where first case was done. And <coughs> this is my family in 1996, 97, 98. So these are very good moments of my stay there. And this is the patient we did the first case and that was done in November 2011. Myself, Dr. Alan Crevier and the patient from India, first Indian patient who was operated, who was operated by Dr. Crevier and myself. And this is a very important remarkable case. And he got, got a life of next 10 years. He was unoperable. The surgeons in India refused to operate him. And that is why at that time, November 2011, this procedure was still not available in India, so we took a flight, went there, did initial working in Indraprastha Apollo Hospital, 
we did the CT scan, we did MRI, we did echocardiography, and then we took him there, and he was, this is just after the operation, and it was done without opening the chest, and then again without any general anesthesia. So coming on to the presentation now, now uh, coming on to the presentation, so my topic, the how I will go and show you the slides will be, how will I show and show you the slides will be that uh, I will first talk about the aortic stenosis. I have already given some initial, uh, some initial uh, thought process about aortic stenosis, but a little, then I will talk about the balloon aortic valvuloplasty. Then I will talk about how the first case was done. And then I will show you the case report. And then what are the current indication? So what is aortic stenosis? Degenerative aortic valve stenosis is the most common acquired valvular disease in adults. It's a valvular disease. It is not angina. It is not heart attack. It is actually a disease of the valve. Heart has got four valves. Four. And the most important valve is aortic valve. Second most important valve is mitral valve. So those people who are medical students, they will understand that the aortic valve is so important and the stenosis of the aortic valve which I am telling about is treated by now non-surgical treatment it's a life-saving treatment 26% of the population above the age of 65 26% almost one quarter of the population above the age of 65 will have either a mild, moderate or severe aortic stenosis and out of this 2% are symptomatic if we see the whole bird population just think of India 140 crores. Out of 140 crores, uh, at least 40 crores population will have aortic stenosis. And if you see 2% will be uh, 40 lakhs. No, 40 crores, 2% will be 4 crore. So 4 crore population or 8 crore population will have serious disease and they require treatment. Unfortunately, in at least 70% patients, surgical treatment is not possible. So now, why I am giving the importance of this, 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 this treatment planning, transcatheter aortic valve implantation has given a new life to the patients of this aging population. So, uh, not going too much details, uh, so I told you that in most of the cases, aortic valve replacement, which is AVR, surgical, is possible. But in standard risk patient, mortality after AVR is about 5%. That means 5% risk in open heart surgery. But this goes very high if the patient is elderly, if the patient has bypass surgery, patient has low ejection fraction, or patient has renal disease, these patients become more risky to get operated. That is why in my case, the surgeon refused to operate. And they said, Vivek, why don't you take him to France? For him, he was a big industrialist. He could afford treatment outside India. And that is why we flew him to France and he lived for another 10 years, recently he, he is no more with us. Uh, from 2011 to 2021 he lived with us. And then he had a renal problem and he died at the age of 92. And that time he was 84. Uh, so 84 and then he died at the 94. So this is a little, uh, <coughs> my method, 1985. <coughs> 1985, Dr. Kribe did the first aortic valve, balloon valvular plasty. What is balloon valvuloplasty? <coughs> the valve is there, you put a balloon and in the balloon, inflate the balloon and the valve will open up. Like this. You have an orifice, you put a balloon inside, a balloon will inflate and put the orifice will become bigger. This is what is known as balloon valvuloplasty. And balloon valvuloplasty, the balloon is inside the uh, aortic valve and when you inflate, the valve becomes bigger. But at that time, there were limitations. It was found that once you do a balloon dilatation, after a few months, the patient will have, will come back and they will have a recurrence of the stenosis. That means the valve will re, there will be recurrence of the narrowing. There will be recurrence of the narrowing. So to solve this issue became a personal obsession for Dr. Alan Krivier. He was a, for the person who did it for the first time, 1985, and then since it had, a, it had a limitation, the limitation was that the possibility of the valve remaining completely open was less and there was early valvular re-stenosis, recurrence of the stenosis and there was no benefit in the long term mortality. Therefore, Dr. Kriber thought what to do 
and that that why he designed this van and it was a big journey from uh, this was the case which was a bomba i want to emphasize on this slide this is very important slide when he did the balloon aortic valvuloplasty it was a patient like this who was almost dying surgeon had refused and he put a balloon inside the aortic valve and then it was done so it was a bomb effect in the medical community a bomb effect means the whole world was how dr kribeer could open the valve with the help of balloon it was almost impossible to do it because why because once you inflate the balloon inside the valve which is which is actually supplying the whole body inflating the balloon will stop the blood flow to the whole body once you have balloon inside the valve which is supplying the blood to the whole body inflating the balloon will stop the blood for completely for the for that particular time and the patient can die so he devised a method of quick inflation and quick deflation quick inflation quick deflation and that is why it was a bomb effect in the medical community lot of people they came from usa to watch dr kribeer doing the procedure of this but the early stenosis what to do next was a planning and that is why what what did 30 years later bab still is required for the purpose of this so tavi now are coming how the valve was developed development of non surgical aortic valve from 1985 to 2002 it's a big journey almost 20 years to develop the transcatheter aortic this is the valve you can see the valve inside the valve how it was done is a is a is a is a very important there's a important sharing i want to slide because this is being a lot of people will understand for the innovation don't undertake a project unless it is manifestly important and nearly or so don't undertake a project unless it is manifestly important and nearly impossible that means you have to take a project which is almost nearly impossible and this is what dr kribe followed and he did this 1985 and 2002 transcatheter aortic valve implantation was done so uh season 1 season 2 so i will skip few slide but i'll show you how the things were made yeah this is a highly challenging area this is the valve you can see valvular calcification lot of doctors will listen and that is why i am talking in the term so that people who are not doctors can also understand and who are medical community can also understand so this is the valve three leaflet there are surrounding structures coronary artery mitral valve and you are going to put the valve inside the valve without opening the chest and the major clinical issue was coronary occlusion mitral valve injury permanent av block stroke aortic regurgitation so all these thing were challenges how it can be done so when you do the for the first time you have to be very very careful and therefore you have to be the usual observation during balloon aortic valvuloplasty was any calcified valve can be circularly opened by high pressure balloon this was the observation a balloon expandable stent with high radial force might keep the valve open a valvular structure would have to be attached within the stent so this is the hypothesis a balloon expandable stent with high radial force will keep the valve open and valvular structure this is the stent and the valvular structure has to be attached within the stent a challenging combination of balloon expandable frame and valve structure this is a challenge so you have to have valve here and then you have to have a stent structure which will keep the valve open so this is how it was there it was impossible surrounding structures were there to so regular um, <coughs> so this was you can see the slide this is the valve this is the height this is coronary artery this is left main coronary artery and this is mitral valve so all these things are nearby so you have to keep a respect when you putting a valve you should not block the coronary artery it should not injure the mitral valve it should not injure the intraventricular septum so these are the challenges when you are putting the valve without opening the chest when you open the chest you know you are seeing everything so all these things were slide which were taken what i mean to say there was a huge work 
there was a huge work before you start doing a innovation. 1994 to 99, they were looking for the sponsor, and there were comments from the because you have to have a sponsor, and the companies which are now selling this vial, Edwards and Medtronic, they had completely rejected the idea. They said this is very important slide. So it was 1999. It was told to Dr. Krivier that this is the most stupid project ever heard. Forget it. This was told by Dr. Krivier to Dr. Krivier by most of the companies that don't do this project. This is impossible. This is the most stupid project ever heard. Forget it. So you have to have a sponsor. That what they did. This was almost the end of the story. But they could still make it because they made a foundation of PVT with the help of American friends, Alan Krivier, along with Martin Leon and Dr. Ravi Vinas and S. Rowe. They made a, a small NGO of a, of a foundation of PVT. New company was formed and they started developing this valve and they used the valve with a triliteral bovine pericardium. Bovine means pig. Pericardial valve, stainless steel stent. And they devised this inside the laboratory, and then they used this extensive laboratory testing animal program. They started doing the sheep. This was actually done in the sheep. Initial animal experimentation was done in sheep, and then after that they thought that everything is fine. Then they did the first stenting, and that was in 2002. So the safety, hemodynamics, everything was tested. Durability was tested and they made it. This is very important. They made the valve. This was tri leaflet valve, which was stainless steel stent and a single diameter and 24 French cream size. One diameter was that time. A stainless steel stent and the bovine pericardium was used to design the valve, which was put inside the stent. The stent means a frame. The stent means a frame. You have to have a frame. Uskender after you have put a valve. So a single diameter and 24 French feet size and this was done, while testing, hemodynamics was done, durability was tested, frame testing was done and then they had this. So THV implantation in animal model there were limitations but there was some deficiency animal model, there was no calcification, there was no antiviral degeneration, different arch anatomy. Moving to human, the most difficult decision to make, moving to human, once you have done a testing in the animals. But whether you can use this and you can be successful in the human being was again a very big difficult decision and that was on April 16, 2002 in France, Rua, which picture I shown you, first in man implantation of the aortic valve was done and this was a 57 year old man with an ejection fraction of only 12%, very weak heart, heart was just pumping like this, it was a very weak heart, multiple comorbidities. It was turned down by three surgical team. Three surgical team had said they cannot operate. Failed emergent transeptal BAV. It was, he was in shock. Blood pressure was only 60 systolic pressure. Challenging decision of transeptal TAVI as a life saving procedure was done. And there was all contraindications of TAVI at that time. So this was a picture you can see. This was a picture of 30 minutes. This is a very important picture while doing the implantation. While they are doing the procedure, this was a thought process. This is how the picture, they were looking at the patient, they were looking at the, this and they never wanted to fail. And this is a man 30 minutes post implantation and this is 8 days post implantation. So from this, it was a lesson. The feasibility of TAVI was confirmed. There was no embolization, there was no coronary blockages, there was no mitral leakage. There was no heart block and there was no AR. So it was confirmed that this is possible to do. And this was 2002, almost 21 years back. So from dream to reality, it was actually a dream and which has confirmed to the reality. And this was done by, it works. It, finally, they were very happy to see this. The vial positioning and everything. The same lab because I have a lot of found because I used to work in the same catheterization lab in 96, 97, 98. So coming back to uh, the, I will show you the cases, but I will give you a little more historical. From 2002 to 2005, there were a lot of 40 patients were done all over the, mostly in France. And then they started doing more and more uh, development of the valve to make it more easy to do it. 
crimping device, pneumon balloon, 24 feet strength height, more technical. Equine pericardium was used this time, not bovine pericardium. And uh, later on, after 22, there were such patients were treated uh, by Dr. Crivier and they had shown it in various conferences. These were elderly patients who were Rade, and you can see she's playing the drum now, two years post viral implantation, 83 year old lady, no heart failure, normal life. There were such patients, multiple patients were done, and there were few patients who were compassionate patients. They could not, they could return to life, and they were, life was saved. So now from later on, the, I started doing in other, it was initially started in France, later New York, Detroit, Vancouver, Canada, Rotterdam, Holland, Milano, Italy, they all started performing from 2005. After three years, 100 cases were performed in Europe in various papers. Of course, started from Dr. Crivier, who is my personal friend. In 2004, the same company, this is again very important, the same company which had rejected the valve, saying this is the most stupid project. The company which had rejected the idea, which is the most stupid project, they buy the PVT company. Now they have acquired PVT company and they have changed from the name Premier Edwards to Edwards Sapien. <clears throat> so now they started doing more researches because you need a sponsor. They started using the bovine pericardium, a sheet size 22 to 24 for implantation retrograde approach was used and John Webb from Vancouver, Canada also started a new development of possibilities and lot and lot more number of people were involved in the research and a few cases were done and then of course the surgeon also wanted to do these cases and uh, overall this was successful case. So at this point of time I am not going to detail detailed slide, um, another 10 minutes I will show you the case which was the first case which was done by me and Dr. Crivier in France in 2011. So uh, I am going to now the case quickly, these are all success. But the important point which I want to hold on and show you this, yes, this is important. Partner trial and partner two trial was started and partner three trial. Whenever there is a new technology, you have to compare with the previously available technology. And previously available technology was surgical opening, surgically open heart surgery. So there was a comparative study between the non-surgical approach and the surgical approach. And this was partner trial, which was after the success of it, they confirmed that this TAVI is successful in high risk population. Partner 2 showed that it is also good to do an intermediate risk population. And partner 3 confirmed that it is, can be used in low risk population. This is what it is today. Low risk population that even if it is a, not a high risk, you should do this case. And thus FDA approved in 2012. 2016 FDA further gave approval for intermediate risk care and further FDA, FDA is an agency in America, it is Federal Drug Administration, which gives approval for doing cases in general population. It is a very important body and they don't give approval easily. So FDA had given approval to the 19 that this vial can also be used in in low risk population that means even the patient can be operated even if the patient can be operated by open heart even then TAVI should be a first choice TAVI should be the first choice even those patients who are low risk for the surgery so this was an important landmark and uh, this is the important slide you can see starting from 1985 Yes, this is an important slide. I will that give you one minute on this. 1985, balloon valvuloplasty, 1994, autopsy study, 1999, they had PVT, 2000, animal experimentation, 2002, first case which was done, important landmark, 2002, feasibility studies, 2007, C mark, which is a European FDA, which gives a, for example, in, DC, in India, it's DCGI, and in, in USA it is every year, in America, Europe it is C mark and partner 3 trial and then they gave a FDA market. So this is how evolution from 1985 to 2002 and then to 2023. 
So 30 years since Bavi, uh, Tavi, we have done lot of such cases. Uh, now I will show you that more than, this is a little old slide, more than 4 lakhs patients have been operated by this surgery. So this is very important. In 2002, Tavi was conceived for patients who are not candidate for surgical valve. Tavi was to be done in the patients who cannot be operated. Now what is 2022? Operation should be done in those cases who are not candidates for Tavi. It's just the reverse. Open heart surgery should be done in the patients who are not, who cannot be done by Tavi. So it's just the reverse from 2002 to 2022. So I will show you now the case study which I have got here, just a minute. I have to slide, I think the case study is in a different, yeah, this is the case report. This is the case report now. So this was an 83 year old patient, 83 year old, quite elderly, who was treated with transcatheter aortic valve implantation for severe aortic stenosis in France. Patient had symptoms of angina, fatigue and dyspnea. This patient valve was very severely narrowed. Valve area was only 0.7 cm square, gradient was 85, mean ejection fraction was well preserved and this patient had already bypass surgery 14 years back. He had a severe diabetes and his graft was reasonably patent. At the same time, the patient has a poor lung functions. He had COPD, asthma. He also had kidney disease. So this patient was not operable and that is why the surgical consultation in India said that this patient cannot be operated. And we thought we should do a TAVI in 2011. Pre-procedure, it was, we had it in Apollo Hospital, we did MRI of the heart, and then we confirmed whether thing and CT and G could not be done. The patient was treated successfully by Edwards XT valve in France. I will show you some video clips <coughs> before I finish this talk. This is how, some videos are, I think in the screen share the videos are not working but I can still manage to show you how the sheath goes from the groin and then the sheath will go from the groin. Let me do this and let me try. No, it's not working. So there's something wrong. So I will, doesn't matter but I will go quickly from case to case. This is a pigtail catheter and then we are crossing the valve. <coughs> this is the valve is, this the, this is catheter pigtail uh, so this is the pigtail catheter here and this is the valve this is the wire which is used to cross the aortic valve and the important aspect is that we are now going with the valve up this is the valve which is going one by one frame the valve is going to this from the groin this valve is reaching up and this valve is coming here this valve is coming here and now the valve, this is the artificial valve which is inside the previously aortic valve and now this valve will open up in the next slide which will open up and this, this opened up in this video, the video is not working and then you can see the valve is fully deployed. This is the valve which is deployed inside the aortic valve and uh, then we pulled out the balloon, catheter everything and the patient was discharged on third day. This was the first case which was done and with conscious sedation without any general anesthesia. It took only 45 minutes of the time and this is the first case from India which was treated by this technique. It was our patient from here. So I think I have to stop the screen sharing and I would like to discuss a few things before we end this talk. So to summarize the surgical aortic let me to go to the conclusion part. And this was again the conclusion, the same conclusion which I have said that this is surgical valve implantation. Uh, in 2002, it was only for the high risk patient. 2011 also for the high risk patient. Now in 2022-23, it is, can be done also in the low risk patient. Before I finish my talk, I want to introduce our conference, Indo-European Course on Device Splashing. 
we have done 19 such courses and uh, we did in Amsterdam, this was in first case in uh, Vigyan Bhavan Delhi, we did in Paris, uh, London, uh, Zurich, Rome and now we are also going to do in Andaman Nicobar in the next year. So this is our conference, Indo-European course, this was a conference which we did in 2009 in Paris and Dr. Krivier is also a part of this conference. If you can see the photo which I showed you in Vigyan Bhavan in Delhi, Dr. Krivier was sitting just next to me here in Vigyan Bhavan, that was 2008. So we have to, uh, we are working constantly, now we have to do in Iceland, we had earlier plans for Iceland, this is Apollo Hospital New Delhi where I am working. So I am just stop screening the slide and then I can take a few questions if there are or else I will further summarize and finish off this talk. How to screen, stop screening? Yes, sir. Okay. So Ankita ji, I am back to you after a little exhaustive uh, talk on Tavi, which is my favorite subject. And do we have to have some questions? But before that, I would like to give a quick summary, again, in one liner. Transcatheter aortic valve implantation is a is a important technique. Transcatheter aortic valve implantation is an aortic important technique. It is a like putting a stent in the coronary artery. It is actually not a stent, but it is a stented valve, which is done for the patients of severe aortic valve cirrhosis. Overall incidence of valvular stenosis is 26% and of, of that at least 2-5% to are symptomatic. Lot of patients do require and unfortunately many times we are not able to do the treatment and the patient normally have a severe heart failure and they cannot be operated because of several reasons, comorbid conditions. This technique has done a revolutionary change in the planning of treatment life-saving procedure if you compare the overall incidence i told you 140 crore population in the outer 140 crore population if two percent are affected so it's a huge number of population which is affected in india if you compare for the world population the world population is almost six billion 600 crores and of 600 crores two percent will be affected or five percent are affected it's a huge number of patients and unfortunately this technique was not available before and there were a lot of patients who should die. Unfortunately again this technique is not being done so commonly in India because of several reasons, because of non-availability of technical skill. For example angioplasty is done in all district. Now angioplasty, I am talking about angioplasty stenting can be done in Agra and so many other places but still Tavi, I am not saying particular city, but Tavi still is not available, it's only available in big hospitals. But this is going to grow and we'll have more and more number of patients worldwide already growing, but we'll have more and more number of patients treated with this life-saving procedure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for the comprehensive talk, for the elaborated topic description. Thank you so much, sir. And your recorded video will be so helpful for all the delegates. And uh, so with all your permission, sir, we can conclude the session about here. And if any question arises later on, we will send it to you, sir. Okay? Thank you very much. It was nice to talk to you with uh, uh, Clarnet, and which is an education, uh, one of the educated education platform. And we are happy that such platforms are existing in the interest of the patient. Finally, it's a patient. You see, all doctors are working for patients, but finally in the interest of patients, the things are working. Uh, let me just give a small uh, acknowledgement uh, to, you can come here, to to one of my interns. She's working in uh, uh, Apollo Hospital. Uh, she is a doctor, future doctor Devyani, and uh, she is with us. Uh, uh, she's a medical student from Antigua, but she's working with us for some time. And she has been with us and working. So I just want to give a thanks to her also and acknowledge you to her. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And we will send it the recorded video to you also. You can send it to your peers and colleagues also. So over all this, thank you so much. We are signing off for today. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Take care. Good night, sir.